Hello and welcome to the Verification Academy. I'm Tom Fitzpatrick, Strategic Verification Architect here at Siemens EDA, and I'll be taking you through the next eight sessions of this video course on UVM Basics. Before we begin, I'd like to thank my friend John Ainsley, CTO of Dulos, for developing the original version of the UVM Basics course. As you know, best practices tend to evolve a bit over time, so we've updated this video course to reflect these changes. Let's go ahead and get started. The first session will be an introduction to UVM suitable for managers as well as engineers. It'll give a brief overview of the architecture of a UVM test bench and start introducing some of the concepts of UVM. The remaining sessions will give a step-by-step -step technical introduction to the details of UVM coding. We'll start with a UVM Hello World example just to show you how to get things up and running. Then we'll talk about how to connect your environment to your DUT. We'll look into how to connect components to each other. We'll introduce the concept of transactions. We'll talk about sequences and tests. And we'll talk about monitors and subscribers. And lastly, we'll talk about reporting. So what exactly is UVM? UVM is the Universal Verification Methodology, which is what UVM stands for. It is a mechanism for describing test benches in System Verilog for designs that are either in System Verilog or Verilog, or even VHDL or System C. It's an Accelera standard, and now an IEEE standard. It's based on the work that Mentor did along with Cadence to develop the OVM, the Open Verification Methodology. And the success of OVM caused a groundswell of support in the industry, and we brought other vendors and users together under Accelera to develop the UVM. UVM is a System Verilog base class library and is the first standard from Accelera that actually ships source code along with the documentation. So that source code is shipped in an in open source under the Apache license. By the end of this course, you'll understand how to put together a UVM verification environment to help you get your job done. Some of the highlights of UVM is it enables constrained random coverage driven verification. That's kind of its reason for being. It allows you to put together configurable and flexible test benches. And it's really focused on verification IP reuse. You know, System Verilog is a large language. There are lots of different ways of doing certain things. And what we're trying to do is to focus your efforts and really create freedom from choice. If everybody does things the same way, then it's real easy to take one piece of verification IP and replace it with another. The idea of this kind of goes along with the separation of concern. So we separate the notion of a test from a test bench. We use transaction level communication so that we're talking between components at a very high level of abstraction and it removes some of the details that make it harder to reuse components from one environment to another. The stimulus itself is, is sequential and as we'll see also randomizable, but it's also layered. So you can have sequences of sequences and a way of coordinating the operation across different interfaces. There's a standardized messaging system and there's also in UVM a register layer, a way of specifying stimulus and response at the register transaction layer, and also for modeling the registers that are in your design so you can make sure that the values of the registers that you expect to be there are actually there. We won't be covering the register layer in this UVM basics course, but if you go to the advanced UVM class, uh, you'll be able to get a lot more information about the register layer there. So basically what we're trying to do here is put together a system that allows you to build a verification environment without having to reinvent the wheel every time. So you want to be able to reuse components from project to project. You want to be able to reuse pieces of the environment as you go from the block level up to the system level. And all of the things in UVM are geared towards that goal. So let's talk about constrained random verification in general. The idea here is that we're creating constrained random stimulus and sending it into a design under test. The idea of constrained random is, is twofold. The constraints are there to make sure that the stimulus that you create is legal. The randomization allows you to find unexpected bugs, particularly when you have stimulus coming in on multiple interfaces. The randomness of the behavior across those two interfaces is more likely to uncover things in the design that you hadn't initially thought about. If we thought about them, we would be able to code around them or fix them initially. So the value of having random stimulus, particularly when you have multiple interacting interfaces, allows us to find those unexpected bugs. It also allows us to automate the stimulus generation. So by specifying it in a constrained random manner, you write one description of your stimulus, and the tools allow you then to take advantage of automation to generate multiple scenarios from that. So when you rerun your simulation with a different random seed, you'll get a different set of random values 
still subject to the constraints, so they'll still be legal, but it will create different sets of transactions that go into your design, and particularly different interactions between the stimulus occurring on different interfaces. So we send the stimulus into the design under test. The design under test operates on it in some way and sends the values out. And now we need to understand exactly what happened because remember, we don't know exactly what the input stimulus is. Therefore, we don't know exactly what the result is. So we have to build an environment that will be self-checking. So we create checkers that look at the inputs and the outputs and have some notion of a reference model or, or some other way of determining correctness because that question, does it work, is one of the most important questions that we need to answer in verification, of course. The other question we have to understand, though, is, is are we done? So if we're creating random stimulus, we need some notion that we've actually covered all of the different aspects of the design that need to be covered in order to say that we've actually tested everything. So we start with our verification plan. From that, we develop a functional coverage model, a set of checkers, a set of cover points in system Verilog, assertions, whatever you're more comfortable with. And we track that to make sure that all of the randomness that we've created actually has reached all of the specific points in the design under test that we want to be able to cover. Everything from have I actually exercised all of the aspects of my protocol on the bus to have I actually hit every transition in my state machine, those sorts of things. So that's functional coverage. So the two big questions, does it work and are we done? UVM allows you to build an environment that will take advantage of constrained random to uncover things that you hadn't necessarily predicted, but also to be able to answer these two questions. Once we understand what our coverage is, we can then modify our constraints to increase our coverage. So if we have packets coming in with headers and payloads and checksums, we may initially start with a small size payload or something. And once we've reached coverage on all of those, then we can modify our constraints so the payloads will start becoming larger. We may expand the range of values allowable in our header, things like that. Um, so as we modify those constraints, it allows us then to increase our coverage and target more aspects of the problem that we want to look at that we've defined in our verification plan. So one of the ways that we do this is we separate this idea of a test from a test bench. So the test is responsible for defining exactly what is going to happen for this particular simulation run. The reusable verification environment is there to define all of the components that we need to interact with our DUT through the interfaces. So once we've defined that reusable verification environment, the test's job is to specify individual things, everything from configuration values to you know, how many times should we run a particular set of stimulus to what specific sequence are we going to run to what version of a particular component may we have in the environment, those kinds of things. So the environment itself is highly configurable, highly reusable. And then the tests are there to define the differences from one run to the next of what we do in that verification environment. So we can have multiple tests, all using the same verification environment, all setting up different things in that verification environment. The most basic things that you're going to change are which sequences you may run to generate different sets of stimulus, and perhaps what coverage information you're going to collect that corresponds to that sequence of what you're going to look for. And, and again, by taking advantage of the randomization in there, we can actually look at things where those interfaces actually interact in the DUT and uncover things that we hadn't necessarily thought about. So the tests themselves become relatively straightforward and very targeted at just the specific things that we need to modify in that environment to get the appropriate things to happen for this individual simulation run. The stimulus itself is there to drive transactions into the DUT. So a transaction, as we'll see in UVM, is an encapsulation of whatever information we need to communicate from one device to another. So in a bus-based system, a transaction may be address, data, read, write. Uh, in a network system, it might be a packet or with header, payload, whatever. So that transaction gets sent to the driver. The driver is a component in UVM whose job it is to talk to the DUT at the signal level. So we take the transaction, which is the way we think about the problem. I want to send a packet into my DUT. The driver then takes that transaction information and turns it into pinwiggles at the DUT. Those transactions themselves are defined as sequences. So a sequence is a specification of a chain of transactions, and that can be a reactive chain as well, based on what the response is from the previous transaction. It can enable you to create a different transaction the next time. Sequences themselves can be nested or layered. So you can have a sequence of sequences. We refer to this as a virtual sequence, whose job it is to coordinate the operation of other sequences. And those sequences can be run in parallel or sequentially. So it allows you to create as complex a set of scenarios as you may need 
And the randomization, again, of what's going on takes care of figuring out the next transaction to generate based on the current state of the system. And we can ensure maximum flexibility in the set of transactions that we generate. So if we look at kind of the big picture of what a verification environment is, we have the DUT. We have a set of verification components whose job it is to communicate with the DUT. And we call these verification components agents. And inside an agent, there are three specific components. There is a sequencer whose job it is to execute and arbitrate across the multiple sequences that may want to communicate to the DUT. That communication happens again through the driver. So the transactions from the sequencer go to the driver. The driver communicates at the pin level to the DUT. And a monitor looks at that same pin level interface, recognizes the pin level activity as transactions and communicates those transactions out to the rest of the environment. In the environment, in addition to these agents, there will be things like scoreboards, coverage collectors, or other analysis components, um, perhaps other verification components, you know, other agents that are talking to the DUT. And then to coordinate the activity of all of these things, we may have a virtual sequence that's part of the test. So the test's job is to configure that environment, to specify what the coverage model may be, what sequences we want to run, what virtual sequence we might want to run to coordinate the activity of other individual sequences that might be running in the agents. And there can be multiple tests. So you can have a library of tests that are all dedicated to a particular reusable verification environment. And we can modify the behavior of that environment through a configuration database. So there's a piece of UVM called the config database that has a set of name value pairs, things like this sequence to be of this particular type. I want to configure that particular sequence to run a certain number of repetitions. I may want to configure my driver to inject errors with a certain frequency. Uh, things like that. So there's a mechanism built into UVM to allow that test to configure the environment is set up to be configured in such a way that it is flexible enough to the, for the test to be able to tweak it as you need to specify whatever specific scenarios you want to have happen for a given simulation run. The UVM itself started as an Accelera standard back in 2011. The official standard was a set of HTML documentation for the class library including all of the classes and their interfaces. The idea was that anyone could develop their own implementation of UVM as long as it met the full interface specification. To make sure that the specification was correct, Accelera also provided a reference implementation for UVM that could be compiled and used with any compliance simulator. Back in 2017, the UVM became IEEE 1800.2 and a new version was released in 2020. The 1800.2 standard only defines the user-facing API, so there's much more flexibility for optimizing implementations, since a lot of the internal APIs, which had to be implemented explicitly in the Accelera version and are included in the reference implementation, are now no longer required. Accelera continues to maintain a reference implementation that matches the 1800.2 standard. In order to understand all of UVM, and really we're talking about how to do verification, you need to understand System Verilog. So uh, obviously UVM is based on System Verilog. It is a base class library, which takes advantage of the object-oriented programming and TLM capabilities in System Verilog. So you need to understand how classes work in System Verilog. We will talk a little bit about classes, but we're not going to be teaching you how System Verilog classes operate. So you need to understand that before you go and proceed much further with this course. We also will talk a lot about constrained random verification. So we are going to be taking advantage of assertions, coverage, constraints, and interfaces in System Verilog. Again, we're not going to be teaching you how these work in System Verilog. We're going to be using them to show you how UVM works given a particular environment. And then on top of that is the real important understanding of the, the whole verification planning and management process. So there is a video course in Verification Academy on how to do verification planning. If you haven't looked at that or don't do much verification planning yourself at the moment, I encourage you to look at that. Um, we won't be talking too much about that in this particular course, um, but we will assume that there's a verification plan in place and try to put together an environment that matches that particular plan. So that's it for the introduction to UVM here in session one of our video course. Please stay tuned for session two.